Today we are going to be looking at how we can do a simple colour swap shader that can swap colours of a sprite. If you like the look of what you're seeing right now, you should watch this tutorial. Also, if you know nothing about shaders, that is fine, you just need to copy what we're doing. So, let's get into making a shader to recolor our Mario. So just a couple of things. We'll be using shader code in this tutorial. You do not need to know how the render pipeline works or even how shaders work. Just follow what we're doing and you'll have the desired outcome. I am no expert with shaders, so we're not going to go into super super detail. This is just here for those who want a quick solution to the problem. So, in your assets folder, right click, go to create, and go to shader. Then go to Unlit Shader. And we're going to call this Color Swap because that's what the shader's going to do. After that, double click on your shader to open it. When you first create your shader, you're going to see there's some code in here. And this is the shader language Unity uses, which is a variant of the HLSL language. Hit Control A and delete everything. We don't need any of that stuff. We're going to do it all by ourselves. So, firstly, we're going to do shader custom slash exact colour swap. I'm going to spell colour the American way here, but the file name will have the UK spelling, because it doesn't matter. But basically, this is going to be our shader, and this is going to be how we can locate our shader when we want to apply it to a material. After that, we have the properties. And these properties will be customizable on the material this shader is attached to. So, this is the main texture, and it's going to be equal to white, so we don't apply any colour changes to our main texture. And this is also going to be the sprite that we want to apply our colour swap to. Original colour. This is going to be the original colour on the sprite that we want to apply a colour swap on. We have a default value of 1111, however, you can customise this in the editor. So we might want to change Mario's red to be green, so he becomes Luigi. Target colour. This is going to be what we want our original colour to become. So, we can set this to be green in the editor so we can turn Mario into Luigi. And then Tolerance. So this doesn't matter too much in the context of pixel art, but probably does matter more when you start getting into more detailed images. But basically, it's how close to the target colour does a pixel need to be to be considered a target for a colour swap. So, I've set the range to be 0 and 0 0.01 as the draggable slide bar in the editor, and then the default value will be 0 0.001. You can customise this, play about with this. Once you have this shader set up, it's really easy to play about and do some experimentation to find colour swaps that work for you. After that, we're going to do a separate block. This separate block will be inside the shader curly brackets, but will be underneath the properties. And we're going to do subshader, then we're going to do tags, render type equals transparent, blend src alpha, 1 minus src alpha, and z right off. So the subshader block defines a subshader which is a collection of rendering passes that together create a final visual effect of the shader. And what we've got here are some settings. And these settings basically mean we're going to set the shader to treat the object as transparent, so we can have transparent pixels. We're going to set the blending mode to handle transparency, and we're going to turn off depth writing on any sprite this shader impacts. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to be doing a pass. So this is inside your subshader, but below your ZW right off. And a pass defines a single rendering step, so basically what are we going to do for each pixel? We're going to do CG program and hashtag pragma vertex vert, hashtag pragma fragment frag, and hashtag include unity cg dot cg inc. And then we also need to do an end cg after it, but we are going to have code in between the end cg and the include. This code is going to also be in the description below so you can copy and paste it, because this is easy to mess up if you don't do exactly what is shown here, and it's harder to debug. But let's get into the actual codes now, which will change the colours of certain pixels. So we have got two structures and then a bunch of variables. So we've got struct app data, float for, which is basically a float with four values, a bit like a vector four, I guess. So you know how you have a vector three, which has X, Y, and Z, while a float four has four values stored in it, which could be something like R, G, B, A, as one example of a float four. 
But anyway, we've got a float for floor called vertex and position, float to UV text called zero. We then we've got a struct V2F and we have a float to UV text called zero and a float for vertex SV position. And then we have some more variables, main text, main text ST, original color, target color and tolerance. Funny enough, all but one of these are all the properties up here. That's right, the four of these are just going to be what our properties are here. But then we have main text underscore st, which is an extra one. Then we need to do a v2f vert function, and we have a parameter called app data v, and we do v2f0 o dot vertex equals unity object to clip pos v dot vertex o dot uv equals transform dot text v dot uv underscore main text return o. And this block just defines the vertex shader function, which processes the vertex of an object. And finally, we have the last bit of code for this shader. And I will explain what each bit does here because this is the important stuff that defines our color swap. So we do hal for frag v2fi sv target. So we're going to be doing what's in this function to every pixel. And we're going to be turning a, a half for, which is just a data type that's shorter than a float in how many digits you have, but it returns four values in this one variable. So basically it's a four component vector and each component of the vector will represent R, G, B and A. And so basically we're going to be getting the current color of the pixel we're looking at of our sprite. Then we're going to check if that pixel, if the alpha of the pixel is equal to zero. If the alpha is equal to zero, that means it's transparent. So we're just going to return a fully transparent pixel to where we call this function and set that pixel to be transparent because we want to keep the transparency of pixels that are transparent. And here simply we're going to check if the current pixel is within the tolerance. So here we're going to be checking if the current pixel is close enough to our original color to be considered for a color swap. If it is, we're going to return the RGB of the target color, which we specified up here. And then we also then return the alpha of the pixel because you don't want to change the alpha of the pixel and you might be thinking but max there's only two parameters correct however but this parameter contains three half values which will be the r g and the b the red the green and the blue and then we also return the alpha which gives us four numbers which represent the colors of our pixel however if we don't do a color swap and we don't set the pixel to be transparent we just return the current color of the pixel because we don't want to change the pixel because we don't want to swap the color like we don't we only want to change mario's t-shirt we don't want to change anything else about him and with all of that you have working shader code so we're going to save our work firstly we have no red meaning the shader compiled successfully so right click go to create and go to material let's call it mario matte now for the shader in the material. You don't want to do that. You want to type, you want to go to custom, and then you're going to see the name of that shader we made before, exact color swap. But it uses the American spelling, not the English spelling of the script, because it's just using this. This is how we find the shader in that shader browser in the material. So we go to custom, and then we can click on our shader. But firstly, before we edit anything, we're going to go to our red Mario and we're going to drag and drop our Mario mat into the material section so it uses this material instead of the default. And look, he's the same right now because there's no color swap. Next, what you want to do is you want to go and click on the original color here and you need to define the RGB of the original color. So for Mario, it is 181, 49 and 32. And as you can see, the color swap has already occurred. We've now changed it to a white costume as opposed to a red and now we can select the target color and we can move that about and look we've just changed Mario's color from Mario to Luigi without an extra sprite. So thanks for being a great audience be sure to leave a like and a comment if you enjoyed and subscribe for more tutorials. If you want to know how to keep this color swapped Mario visible if you rotate him on the Y axis click the eye up in the corner for a really quick solution to that problem relating to Colin. But thanks for watching.